Have you ever tried to understand a subject so bad, but every time you sit down to study and open the textbook, you understand nothing. Everything just seems like Greek and Latin. You keep staring at the text for hours together, but you don't even know what you're reading anymore. Sound familiar? Don't worry. All of us have been there once in a while. If you're new here, hi, I'm Suprita. I'm a final year medical student in BGS Medical College, Bangalore, India. And in today's video, I'm going to be giving you guys five steps to master any subject and crack any competitive exam. A part of today's video is sponsored by Picmonic, an amazing app for MBBS students. So if you want to know more about them, make sure you stay tuned. Step one is priming. Priming is a process of introducing a stimulus or questioning the person about the topic even before he or she is taught about that particular topic. Priming as a subject was extensively studied by many psychologists in 1970s. Among the various randomized controls that were carried out, one was carried out in school children. The school children were divided into two groups and one group was primed and the other group which was not primed was taken as the control group. So the group which was primed was introduced to mathematical questions in the form of games. At the end of the semester, both the groups were tested and it was found that the students who had been primed performed significantly better than the students who had not been primed. So my strategy before I study any new subject is always to go and look at what are the questions that are asked about this particular topic or what are the MCQs that are asked about this particular topic because once I know how the questions are asked or what is the application of the particular topic that I'm reading, then it becomes so much more easier for me to understand and correlate the topic that I'm reading right now and also have a deeper understanding of the subject. Step two is understanding the basics. I know this is a very basic tip and a very cliched one, but this is the best tip that anybody can ever give you. The reason why I'm saying this is because even in MBBS, I see so many people who are just by hearting stuff and not understanding the concepts. A lot of the times when you think you hate a subject, it's probably not because you actually hate it, but because you have not understood the basics. When I was in first year, I really didn't like histology so much because it just felt like I was supposed to randomly remember the epithelial layers that are lining the different parts of the body, which does not make any sense to me because I was just supposed to memorize them. But one of my teachers once told me that instead of just memorizing the various epithelial layers that are present, why don't you try to understand what is the function of each area that you're studying about and then deduce what type of epithelium is supposed to be present. And then she gave me the example of stomach. See, in the stomach, we know that a lot of HCL has to be produced and a lot of mucus has to be produced. And you also know that columnar cells, which are usually responsible for producing mucus or any sort of secretions. So obviously, the stomach should also be lined by columnar cells. And so if you extend the same logic to anywhere else in the body or take care of any other organ which is involved with secretion, you can somewhat confidently say that it is going to be lined by columnar epithelium. So once you understand the basics and you change your perspective about a subject, reading the subject becomes so much more easier. So always, always please try to understand the basics of the subject first and then start going into the nitty gritty details. Step three, multimedia learning. Now that I told you guys that you need to understand the concepts well, the question is, how do you do it? And the answer to that is multimedia learning. This topic as a subject of interest was introduced by an American psychologist called Richard Mayer, where he stated that the most efficient way to learn a new subject or a new topic is by integrating both auditory and visual media instead of just reading the textbook. 
He carried out research based on the assumptions that our brain has two major input pathways for any new information that is the visual one and the auditory one and also these channels are easily saturated in the sense that the amount of stimulus that your brain can handle in a particular period of time is very limited and so if you want this memory to be ingrained into your brain well you have to actively try to put it inside your brain because let's take an example when you're walking on a road every day you are seeing hundreds and thousands of people and all of this cannot be remembered by your brain it has to get filtered and forgotten because if this doesn't happen you will not have space to remember the important things the conclusion from these studies is that the next time you're trying to read a new subject or a new topic don't just start by reading your textbook but instead first watch explanatory videos or animated videos and and this will help you enhance your comprehension of the subject and also give you a deeper understanding now that we're on the topic of multimedia learning here's a little info about today's sponsor picmonic picmonic is a wonderful platform which converts difficult topics of mbbs into animated videos and animated mnemonics which act as memory or visual cues for you to retain and remember the subject for a longer period of time and also enhance your multimedia learning, thus improve your concept. What I love about Picmonic is the fact that they have short one or two minute videos for each and every topic of MBBS ranging from first year to fourth year, right from anatomy to medicine. And the best part is that for every topic, there are two parts. One is the educational part and the other is the story part. In the educational part, everything is explained in detail. And in the story part, everything that has been explained in the educational part is converted into a story so that it becomes easier for you guys to remember whatever you have learned. Cornybacterium diphtheriae produces an exotoxin, the bursting toxic balloon which leads to ADP ribosylation of elongation factor 2 in host cells, shown as the ADP Red Bull with the elongating elf wearing two tutus. This alteration of elongation factor 2 in host cells renders them unable to synthesize proteins, leading to cell necrosis. They also have resources for USMLE Step 1 and Step 2, along with resources for books like First Aid, which are extremely useful for USMLE aspirants. In the end, they also have quizzes which you can take to enhance your active learning. If you want to try out or take a trial, then go to their YouTube channel where they have posted free videos and check them out first. And I'm pretty sure they will be super useful to you. And then if you think that they are useful and you want to buy them, you can go to the link in the description below which has my code and you will get an instant 20% off on your purchase. Step 4 is interleaving. A lot of the times when we encounter a difficult subject or a difficult exam, what a lot of people think is that the best method is to sit down with that particular subject and read it straight for 8 hours and you'll understand everything. Wrong. This is called chunking which has been scientifically proven that it is not a good way to understand or read a particular subject and instead you should be using something called interleaving whereby when you sit down with a subject you are sitting down to read it only for a particular or a certain amount of time and then you stop reading it go to another subject and then come back to this subject again and continue reading it the reason why this has been proven to be more efficient is that when you chunk your subjects or try to read everything in one go your brain gets saturated how much ever you are studying you will not be understanding anything over a certain period of time and the second point is that when you are spacing your studies between in two different subjects, it gives your brain to initiate lateral thinking. It gives your brain to connect the dots between two different subjects and integrate them. If you're studying heart in first year and you only end up studying everything about the anatomy of the heart and nothing about the physiology of the heart, it's not going to be useful because in real life, that's not how 
human body works your anatomy and physiology is always going to be integrated so instead of reading everything about the heart initially if you just read about the anatomy of the valves of the heart and then you go and read about the physiology of the valves of the heart then you will be able to integrate and correlate the two subjects better and read better the fifth tip and the final tip for today is the rrr method once you have studied and understood the concepts very well the most important thing for any subject or for any exam is actually remembering the topics and for this you can use something called the rrr method which comes out to be read review and recall we have already done the reading part next is the reviewing part what research says is that there is something called the forgetting curve where if you read something you have a tendency of forgetting it within the next 48 hours and so if you really want the information that you have studied to stick to your brain you have to reinforce it into your memory so what can you do after you read something for example say after one hour you close the textbook and you review whatever you have studied in your brain or just pick a piece of paper and start writing whatever you remember so this is going to be the review part and then next comes the recall part which mainly involves space repetition where you are spacing when you are going to again revise this information i have already made a detailed video about both active recall and space repetition in my previous videos i'm going to link them down in the description below or give a playlist at the end of the video so make sure you check them out but just to give you a gist of what space repetition is basically your memory starts decaying over a period of time and so if you want to ingrain whatever you have studied it into your permanent memory you need to keep revising them and that too at spaced intervals which are increasing in number for example if you studied something today you will revise it after 3 days and then after 7 days and then after 15 days and then after 1 month mm -hmm. this has been proven to be the most efficient method to remember anything that you want i genuinely hope that this video was helpful to you guys if it was please don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button and comment down below and do check out pickmonic it really is a wonderful app for all mbbs students thank you so much for watching have a nice day